Making it like a unique, yeah. like I just know I love number three in the arrow press. I like a number two, like at the coffee shop level, like when you're serving it up. Like people just, can, we can translate it. None of this grande vente, none of this lingo. Mm -hmm. Just simple, cool, like, you know what I mean? We give yeah. easy numbers and names. Like, what is a venti? What's the difference between a venti and a I mean, grande? We just saw like, if we had simple naming, and even for our roasts, simple names. Yeah, I'm with you. But yet, yeah, cool, kind of classic, you know, maybe somewhat creative. But there's no like, what does that mean? Minimal aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Try straight up before you. I have a little cup milk if you want, of course. But. Nah, I'm probably just gonna drink it off straight. What's the arrow press? Is that like the front mini French press? I'm gonna do it right now for myself. Yeah. The arrow press. Are we gonna video finally yet? We're gonna video well, this guy. Is he going? Good. Right. So what you missed <laughs> is Mikey was they using this Capresso. <laughs> Tell the people about the Capresso, the grinder. Was it about a hundred bucks? You get it on Amazon? Uh, Bed Bath and Beyond, 20% off. Picked it up at picked it up at Bed Bath and Beyond, and then for the the Mocha, jo what is it called? M O K A. Mocha pot. The Mocha pot, M O K A, not Mocha, M O C H A, which is an espresso based beverage. But the Mocha pot, um, you put it on the finest settings. Is that what you did, Mike? The, put it on extra fine and zero. Are you gonna do the same thing for the? The AeroPress? AeroPress? Uh, I'm gonna turn not quite as fine. Not, not quite, quite as fine. Not quite as fine. But still fine. Finer than drip, uh, but the, not as fine as, as an espresso. So, in my opinion, and I'm gonna come in a little closer, the the, the grind is almost important as the roast, in my opinion. The finer you grind it, the more water can make contact as uh, the, sur uh, the surface area of you know each individual bean. The more it's chopped up, the more water can go over it, which is necessary the faster you're going to bring the water over the grind. Smell. Oh. Do you like coffee smell? Do you think it smells good? I love coffee. So we're drinking, we're drinking blue bottle yes. from a Starbucks mug. That was intentional. It's just, it's, there's a, I don't want to sound like a wine snob, but there's a full body flavor there. You know, you can taste more of the coffee with every sip. You know, you get more than yeah. just it keeps, yeah. a bitter, you get more than just a bitter slap in the face. You get, you get a lot. What about the AeroPress, Mike? Where'd you pick the AeroPress up? Bed Bath and Beyond. More Bed Bath and Beyond. Wow. Is there something you want to tell the, the audience? Yes, yeah, it's a great place to shop. <laughs> they always give you 20% off, and they give you like $5, $5 off. Mm -hmm. Is that hot water, Mike? Yes. So you're letting it sit for a while Just here. 30 seconds. Mm. This is what they call blooming. I'm letting it bloom. Mm. I'm letting the... I used a little bit too much water. You use just enough water to let the coffee get wet. Yeah. And it kind of starts to unlock the oils. Let me let that brew for a minute. This is the inverted method. Normally, you do this all in the reverse. Some of the people going, what are you doing? They do every day. Somebody knew. I said, have you had the coffee here at work? And they're like, yeah. I'm upset. We go back to go back to what I'm doing here. You should be getting a tart, silky, and brisk. <laughs> what they go. Is it brisk? It's not quite as brisk as I'd like. 
it feels a little slower, you know? I feel like it could, the coffee could really pick up the pace a little bit. The silky, I'm feeling silk. Feeling silk all day. <laughs> yeah, I think it is done. And what was the first thing? What was the first one? Tart. Tart, yeah. I'm definitely get the, I think that's where the, the, the cheeks, the, yeah. the cheeks come in, because it is tart. And yeah. A little kick in the side. Yeah. yeah. You're just building on a better foundation. Absolutely, absolutely. And and even the espresso, say you're going to make an espresso-based beverage like a latte or a mocha, something, right? something along those lines where you're adding a bunch of milk and syrups and stuff. The, the foundation is always the espresso. So you're gonna be better off with a better foundation. Yeah, what do you think? I like it, it's still hot. Yeah, the mocha pot brews it a little hotter. Yeah just because of the process. I've committed, I've committed to um, drinking you. drinking all of it straight. Which it doesn't, do it. yeah, I, I enjoy it. But normally if I'm drinking it straight, I'm drinking, I like shots of espresso. I like the yeah. whole, I don't know, just the whole yeah. action and the whole, everything that's involved with it. I think it's just good that you do that so you can get the full flavor profile of what I think to be a superior brew. Best coffee I've ever had. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It, and I think for for if you're used to Folgers, if you're used to a Starbucks, you really can tell that there's a difference between like the the when people say it tastes burnt, what they mean is that there's not the flavors aren't as subtle and aren't as warm and aren't as pronounced. It all feels kind of charcoal together, and I think yeah. you can really, when you when you taste this cup, you can tell the difference. Even if you don't like that particular, um, you know, if you don't like the taste of coffee, you yeah. can tell there's a difference. And that's where you're going to come with us and learn more about it. Now, what's changed now in the market is, is this. There's a whole new thing yeah. with curates and specialty coffees in one cup. Yeah. And, and even people that used to be Folgers, Maxwell House, 8 o'clock coffee, you know, just buy the tub, throw it in, they are now using these. Yeah. Well, like, and how, we'll see, then that was going to be my next question. How do you, does Blue Bottle make single cups? Not currently, but almost all of them, you, like, they come with the, the little can container, the can yeah. canister. Oh, sure. Right. You make your own. Right. Which most people prefer because it's cheaper, much cheaper than buying the cake cups. Yeah. You know what I mean? Think you, that was, I think getting the right brine down is, is important with that. It sure is. And that's why my vision initially is when you sell the roast, you also ask them, well, how are you brewing Sell this? the education. And you say, okay, do you want me to grind it for you? Or if you're grinding it yourself, you want it here and there. Exactly what the guy was on. He, he teaches people. That's what you gotta do. Yeah. And I know there's more. That's not a very good <coughs> business model. You don't want, if you have a barrier to entry like that, you know, an investor would say, I don't want to mess with that. Okay. I want to dump money on it, I want to pour gasoline on the fire, watch it grow, and then take my money out. Yeah. I don't, but that's not fun. That's not us. That's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for investors, is that all? Yeah, we're not so looking for investors. We're maybe, looking for us. Maybe one. Who? I don't know. <laughs> Someone that wants to invest in us. Not just in making money. So. Well, if they're investing in making money, then they wouldn't be investing money with us. <laughs> I think the challenge with scaling coffee is something that you probably already identified, but the bag says it, May 13th, right? So as you become snob, you say, and part of that education is, hey, you want to grind it, roast, you want to drink it within X amount of time, yes. right? You don't want to yeah. leave it. Now, if, if that's your model, if you say, hey, please drink within the next month or whatever, if you roll that out massively to Walmart and Costco and Sam's Club, mm -hmm. are you going to yes, take it back? 
Are you going to say, hey, that wasn't consumed within two months when we think it's freshest? Yeah. And if you're going to guard your reputation and the product, right? Because if somebody tastes it and it's six months after you say they shouldn't drink it anymore yeah. or whatever um, or consume it, right? Then, then you say, well, they're not getting the full experience. Yeah. But that might be the only experience that they, they have and then they're turned off to your product. Yeah. I still believe that even with you know a roast that's good like this, it will last and hold up longer. Like I mean, if you go the Costco beans that I bought, they said they're good until like July of seventeen. Yeah. So they're saying in this bag they'll be consumable. I know that doesn't mean they're going to taste good in July of seventeen. It's just it's no coffee starts losing after forty eight hours. The roast starts losing its aroma. But I think with the internet, with, I mean, I don't know if you, with uh, Amazon, the pressure that Amazon is putting on FedEx and UPS for now delivery, like constant delivery. Yeah. No days off, no time off. Sundays, you used to not deliver? Nope. Our customers want delivery. So these, the pressure from Amazon, which is the 800 pound gorilla right now, which it used to not be, which is funny as well, but is that you get this delivery at all times, you know, yeah. quick delivery. And I think that you can circumvent the Costco's and the Walmarts, but the allure of being bought, you know, the mass production yeah. is there. But then as I was listening to, can't remember which podcast it was, but Derek Sivers, Sivers from CD Baby fame, he talked about freedom. Yeah. He talked about freedom, fortune, or fame. Which of the three Fs do you want? Yeah. And I think I don't want fortune and fame. I just want freedom. Yeah. I, I, I want. I want to make enough money to exactly. to keep doing what I'm doing and enjoy what you love. Enjoy what I love. We are the music makers. And we are the dreamers of dreams. Mm -hmm.